Hi weaving friends, have you ever heard about the sweet spot in weaving? Today I'm going to discuss what the sweet spot means to me and what it looks like on the loom that I'm using. This video is brought to you by the Shadow Weave on a Rigid Heddle Loom class. This class will either be available right now at the time of this video or very soon. If you are interested in the new classes that I bring out and the new patterns that I bring out, my recommendation to you is to sign up for my mailing list. That way you don't miss out on anything. And you also get a free pattern when you sign up for the mailing list. I'm gonna leave the link to that down below. The Shadow Weave class is a really fantastic class for perhaps the more advanced or adventurous rigid head or weaver. In the class, I'm going to be providing instructions for using two heddles or using three heddles to weave first a sampler in shadow weave and then a project. The start of the shadow weave class is really in depth and all about what shadow weave is, the different methods you can use to weave it and how you can go about designing or converting a twill draft into a shadow weave draft. You can actually see me weaving the project for the shadow weave class in this video today. I'm going to leave the link for that class down below if you want to check it out. So finding the sweet spot in your weaving is going to have a bunch of different factors. Things like which loom you're weaving on, what sort of project you're doing, what your personal preferences are, what your yarn is. All these things influence where you are going to find your sweet spot. In, on your particular loom and your particular project. Now today I'm going to be showing you and talking about the project that I have on my rigid heddle loom and I'm going to be showing you my preferred sweet spot. So what is a sweet spot? It is the place where your weaving feels right and good and gives you really good results. What it's really about is the angle of the beater as it hits the weft, as you're beating the weft in technically, but to me it's a lot more than that as well. It's really about that feel good spot that every time you advance your warp, you seem to come back to that same sort of place as, oh, I like to weave in this spot. And it really is going to differ first for different looms. So the sweet spot on a rigid heddle loom is gonna be quite different to the sweet spot on say my big floor loom. And it's also going to be a bit of personal preference. Now, the way that you find your own sweet spot, and this usually happens before you even know what a sweet spot is, which is what happened to me, is that the more you weave, the more you notice that you'll advance the warp in a certain way and you'll advance it to approximately the same area each time. That just happens naturally as you gain experience as a weaver because you find the best ways to do things, right? So it's a little bit hard to describe what it feels like to be in that sweet spot because it is like a physical feeling that everything just kind of falls into place. Your weft beats in nicely. You don't have any gaps or streaks in your weaving. The tension feels good. It's a whole combination of things. But I'm gonna show you what the sweet spot looks like on my loom that I'm weaving on right now. And I'm also gonna show you what wouldn't be the sweet spot for me in a couple of different places and for different reasons. Okay, so right now where I have my weaving, this is the same sort of spot that I would advance my warp to each time I advance my warp. This is something, as I said, that I've just noticed over a long period of time of weaving that this is my preferred spot to advance to. And so I just want to share some measurements with you and everything just to give you a good idea. And I'm not saying that this is the perfect spot to advance to. I'm saying this is what works for me and feels good for me. So when I'm within this area, the beating feels really nice, okay? It's not strained. When I beat my weft into place, it stays in place. My, I can put my head all up and down and there is tension there but there's not so much resistance that I feel like I'm gonna break threads. And so it's all things like that, that tell you this is your sweet spot. I have lovely even tension all the way across. Now I'm weaving with three heddles today, but this, this is the same information regardless of how many heddles you're using. 
The first thing I want to do is measure in inches from my front heddle. So this, if I was using one heddle, it would just be in this position. Um, I want to measure up how far it is from my heddle to the fell of my weaving. So the fell is like the last weft pick that you wove, the last row. So the edge of your weaving. So for me, it's almost eight and a half inches from the heddle to the fell of the weaving. And then I want to measure and again no none of this is precise none of this is exact this is just for me to share with you to give you an idea so you don't need to write these figures down you don't need to take notes on this and then to the front of the beam let's say um, the very front of the beam like halfway around the front of the beam from the fell is about five and a half inches all right just to give you an idea and I've never measured that before. It's not a precise thing. It's just how it feels and how it looks. So I know that at this spot, when I start weaving, it feels good. Also, I've got a good amount of area to weave in. So I know that my sheds are going to be nice and big, lovely. I'm not going to have any problems with my sheds there by not having enough room to weave through. But also, it's not so far forward that... I have other problems. I'm going to show you what that looks like in a moment. So let's have a look at what happens if you are advanced, if you're not advanced forward enough. Here we have the weaving very close to the heddle. There's only about a four inch difference there. You can see if I'm trying to weave with this space, well, the first thing that's most obvious is I have very little space to weave through. Okay, and then let's just say that I'm going to weave that shed and then I've got a tiny beading space as well it's going to be really hard for me to maintain consistent edges if I'm weaving right up here as opposed to weaving in my sweet spot down here because the the warp threads you can see are much wider in the heddle than my weaving is so if I have a bit of a good bit of space before weaving it's so much easier for me to have those consistent edges. Also, my tension is quite different when my weaving is right up here and it just makes everything all that much harder. Now for this example, I've advanced my warp way too far forward and this will definitely not be a sweet spot for me. I've got about 10 inches of warp there in between my weaving. And when I try to weave at this distance, just as I did before. It's, it's hard to kind of weave at this spot because you're kind of crouching over it. Like you don't have room to just naturally sit back and work at a space where it's easier for me to see what I'm doing, also to feel what I'm doing and just to operate everything. I'm kind of crouching in this space and bunching my hands up and it feels really unnatural. And then when I go to beat, my bead is almost touching the front bar here. Um, I can almost whack it with the, the beater. And that is just way too far forward. There's only a little bit of weaving here for me to see what my edges are doing. And so it's too hard for me to have a comparison. If I've just got this tiny amount of weaving to compare to, rather than if I'm weaving in my sweet spot up here somewhere, and I've got a good bit of weaving to watch what's happening catch any mistakes, maintain my edges and all of that. Again, the tension is different here. I would have to tighten up the tension a bit more to um, feel comfortable about it. And it just doesn't feel right. That's one of the major indicators that this is not my sweet spot. It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good. Now I just want to give you a couple of tips about maintaining your sweet spot. One of the most important things I think is to advance regularly, is to advance very regularly and a little at a time. So when I advance my warp, I really think of it as edging forward rather than just letting go of the tension and then tightening up and letting it sort itself out. So I'm gonna show you, I'm ready to advance my warp just a little bit at this point because I am getting closer to the heddle now you might think oh you've got tons of room before you get to the heddle yeah 
I have, but I'm getting away from my sweet spot there. I want it more back here. And so I'm gonna do that edging forward and show you exactly how that looks. So when I'm ready to advance, I come first to the back break. I let it go a couple of notches. So you'll see the notches on the inside of your break there. So I, I, I take off that tension, but I hold on to it with my other hand and I let it go just a couple of notches. It's almost like, I think of it as like letting the loom sigh. Sounds a bit weird, but it's like you're just letting off that little bit of tension. And so you can just sort of feel it go, ah. Okay, that's the best way I can think of to describe it. Then I come to the front break and I tighten up the same number of notches that I let off, about two. And then I go, okay, is that enough? I think I want just a little bit more. And so I edge it forward one or two more. Very, it's all a very gentle thing. And then I come to the front Tighten up the two that I let off and then I check my tension. I check my positioning. Yes, this feels like my sweet spot, but I'd like just a little more tension on it. The tension will change. Even if you've just let off two notches at the back, you may need to put on more than two notches at the front. The yarn changes over the time. I'm using wool, it's a bit stretchy. Um, the tension does change as it rolls through. So I'm gonna go one more. I think I could even have one more than that too. Now I'm going to see how I feel. Feels good, feels great. And the next thing that I want to do, once I have advanced my warp, that little bit in the little steps, the little sigh, I want to give an extra beat. Yes, I did beat this weft into place beforehand, but changing the tension also changes the way the weft is sitting in the warp. So every time I advance the warp, I give one extra beat. The other tip that I have for maintaining your sweet spot is to only weave one to two inches at a time. It's not very much, I know. Let's have a look. One to two inches, okay. That'd be one inch of weaving right there and two inches would be a little bit longer. You can get away with two inches for sure. You can get away with more, but if you want to maintain that gentle approach of slowly advancing, weaving a little, advancing a little, and maintaining that kind of method that I do, one to two inches is a really good amount before advancing to the next spot. Then you're never weaving far away from your sweet spot. So you're always in that kind of happy weaving place. Friends, I hope this was super helpful to you. As I said, this will differ from loom to loom. So if you have multiple looms, you will find that as you experiment, they will have different sweet spots. You will find them, but maintaining that gentle approach of little by little will really help you to stay in a good spot and optimize your weaving. Let me know down in the comments what your experience has been with your different looms or your single loom with finding your sweet spot. Have you ever heard of the sweet spot before? Is this a new thing to you? I would love to hear from you. And until next time, happy weaving!